Building upon what you've already learned in our first video on logic, how would you handle this paradox? This sentence is false. If we read this as true, it's false. But if we read it as false, then it's true. It would appear as though we have a contradiction. Watch to the end of the video to learn how you should respond. Welcome back to the channel where we learn how to think critically, evaluate arguments, handle criticism, and persuade people. If any of that interests you, become a better thinker by subscribing to the channel so you won't miss out on any essential critical thinking skills. We cannot think without logic, and knowing its rules will help you more clearly see when they're broken. So you won't be manipulated, taken advantage of, or at least you'll be able to see what the salesman is doing when you buy your next car. You'll still buy it, but it'll be with full knowledge that a logical fallacy was used to trick you. Then you'll laugh, the salesman will laugh, and your wife will judge you. Here are the three rules of logic. Number one, the rule of non-contradiction, not both. A cat cannot be a dog at the same time and in the same sense. I am not six foot seven. I am six foot. I cannot be both. A cannot equal A and equal non-A. Good morning. What do you mean? Do you mean to wish me a good morning or do you mean that it is a good morning whether I want it or not? Or perhaps you mean to say that you feel good on this particular morning. Or are you simply stating that this is a morning to be good on? All of them at once, I suppose. A statement cannot be both true and false at the same time and in the same respect. Without this fundamental law of logic, all thought breaks down. If a statement can be simultaneously true and false, then rationality itself is an empty concept. For example, Nothing can both be and not be at the same time and in the same respect. Inside of the rule of non-contradiction is another one. If something is true, the opposite is false. Number two, the law of excluded middle. One or the other, no third option. For example, a statement is either true or false. Something either is or it is not. Don't confuse the law of the excluded middle with a logical fallacy called the false dilemma or false dichotomy. A false dichotomy abuses logic by offering two options as an either or proposition when there is a possible third option or more. For example, if someone asks if you've ever been caught robbing a bank, be careful how you answer. If you answer no, then you just committed to robbing banks but not getting caught. So no matter which way you answer, you condemn yourself. The correct way to handle a false dichotomy is to offer a third hidden option. For example, would you rather keep your job or be honest with your boss? False. I will keep my job and be honest with my boss. With logic, we're thinking in terms of propositions. A proposition is an evaluative statement, a claim or judgment that is either true or false. If there is a third possible option or a degreed truth value, then we're not looking at a proposition but a statement. Propositions are truth bearers, whereas statements are not. Think of opinions, ideas, or thoughts. They don't have an either true or false value. Close the door, for example. Or, are you going to eat that? They're not propositions because they don't end up being true or false. It is true that Jack ate Rocky Road ice cream. But Rocky Road ice cream is not true or false. Look at this another way. What do you do if Jack kind of likes Rocky Road, but kind of doesn't? The proposition that Jack likes Rocky Road ice cream has now entered the realm of statements with degreed truth values. Jack's not entirely sold on the delicious chocolate ice cream with little marshmallows and walnuts. But he doesn't hate it either. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Commit, Jack. Jack ate the Rocky Road ice cream is much easier to evaluate than Jack likes Rocky Road when he's unsure of its flavor being something he likes. Did the kids catch you eating Rocky Road? 
I plead the fifth. Another example. Dinosaurs are currently alive or they are not. We would have to define terms to make sure we're communicating accurately about what qualifies as a dinosaur. But according to the evidence and scientific knowledge, there are no living dinosaurs. But just because we don't know of any doesn't mean there aren't. And in order to make the claim that there are no dinosaurs with certainty, we would have to have all knowledge of every cave, forest, wilderness, grassland, coast, and estuary on Earth. It's safe to say there are no dinosaurs, but it's not as certain as the proposition that it rained today. I really hope there are dinosaurs somewhere. What is it with you and dinosaur world? It's a sick thing. It's like you're obsessed with this dinosaur world. I believe the dinosaur world is the only place where a boy like me can be happy. With the excluded middle, our statement either aligns with reality or it does not. The law of excluded middle states that we cannot be referring to two things that oppose each other. We cannot say something is true and false simultaneously. These rules can be challenging to understand, and the reason they seem to be so is because they're so basic. We don't have to think about how and why they are. They're ingrained in our thoughts and help us make sense of the world. Before babies can speak, they understand these basic rules of logic. That's what I'm saying. He was like, ah, you know what I'm saying? I was like, what in the world? But don't do it here, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And in fact, must have these necessary foundations for intelligible speaking to be possible. They won't know them like we know them, but they will employ them nonetheless. Hey. Yes. I want my bird. A bird? You want a bird? I want my bird. I can get your bird. I can get you ten birds. I want my bird. Well, okay, nothing's impossible. I could... Are we talking about... Uh, is this a bird back in Russia? Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> we got you the bird, pal. This is not my bird. What do you mean? That's the bird. This is the bird. Yeah. Pull a lot of streets to get this bird. This is a great bird. It's a beautiful We bird. got this all the way from Russia. Hey, man, this is not my bird. Well, listen, even if it's not the bird, I mean, this is, a, this is a gorgeous bird. I mean, you know, look, don't get so attached to things. Learn to let go. By stating something is this, we are naturally saying that something is not that, which leads to our third law. The law of identity. It is what it is. A true statement is true. A thing is what it is. A cat is a cat, and a dog is a dog. If we couldn't identify a particular from the general, or general from the particular, everything becomes the same thing and nonsensical. Communication is built upon these principles. And without them, thought, language, meaning, concepts, exchanging ideas, all of it becomes impossible. There are ardent skeptics of logic out there who claim to prove logic is false. I had no idea. I don't believe it. I gotta see this for myself. I'm dubious. It's another nice word. Anyway. Remember what I said last week about disproving logic? You must use logic to attempt to disprove it. When someone attempts to claim logic is false, wrong, or broken, ask them how they arrived at that conclusion, because it wasn't by logic. But in their attempt to say logic is false, they are actually saying something that is nonsensical. Here's why. Logic is the science that helps us evaluate reasons, beliefs, and decisions. It's a tool that allows us to distinguish good arguments from bad. Logic is the study of right reason or valid inferences, conclusions drawn from premises, and the attending fallacies. If our skeptic claims that logic does not exist, doesn't work, or is wrong, ask them to explain their reasons, beliefs, and decisions to distinguish if what they have is a good argument. What you know, but they have yet to discover, is that the very act of arriving at the conclusion that logic doesn't exist, doesn't work, or is wrong, is doing logic.
Here's one such attempt at disproving logic called the liar's paradox. This sentence is false. This is called a self-referential statement, and it would appear to put the logician between a rock and a hard place. According to the rule of excluded middle, this sentence must either be true or false. It cannot be both, and there is no third option. If the sentence is true, though, it turns out to be false. And if it's false, it turns out to be true. Paradoxes are fun, aren't they? If our skeptic of logic is right, then we can't communicate, understand, or know our world. Remember our first rule of logic, non-contradiction? A cannot be B at the same time and in the same sense. So what is going on with this paradox? How do we answer them? There are two propositions. The sentence is a sentence, and by its nature, truly a sentence. But it communicates that it is itself false. This is nonsense. Something cannot both be and not be at the same time and in the same sense. Logic grounds intelligibility entirely. Without logic, we can't make sense of anything. These three rules of logic apply to all matters of thought. You cannot think, speak, or act without utilizing the rules of logic. This is why we use logic to evaluate the truth claims of every worldview, religion, argument, or proposition. They hold true for any and all worldviews, even if a worldview disagrees with them, because they must use them to attempt to disprove them. Gravity exists whether you believe it or not. If someone believes they can step off the top of a building, they don't just need a trainer in logic. They need a psyche eval and possibly counseling. Say for argument's sake, they believe they will fly or float. Their beliefs have no sway on whether or not gravity will take hold of them and bring them to the pavement below. Non-contradiction is the main law of logic that you will employ in your thinking to keep you and your arguments grounded. If the other two were difficult to grasp, that's okay. They're closely related, and it'll come to you the more you employ them. You may be thinking, but people aren't logical. They're not rational. They're emotional, driven by desire, illogical, pursuing passions, even when those passions could destroy them. True, but that doesn't prove logic is irrelevant or of no use. People aren't moral either. People aren't honest. Does that prove that people shouldn't be? It simply means some people don't follow the principles they should. Not that we should reject what ought be done. Crime is common. Logic is rare. Therefore, it is upon the logic rather than upon the crime that you should dwell. Sherlock Holmes. What's wrong with this statement? It is reasoning that rare things should be sought over common things. What would you say to that? Is Holmes committing a logical fallacy? If crime became rare and logic common, should we dwell on the crime rather than the logic? Stick with me to see how deep this rabbit hole goes. And until next time, critical thinkers, think deeply. Don't put the dinosaur on me like that. Just leave the dinosaur over there. Just leave the dinosaur over there like that. I'm trying to tell you something. When I, when I was a little boy, you know, you touch the dinosaur, I'm going to kill you. Stefan wanted to stand here. Give me the dinosaur. No. Give it to me. I'm going to stand here.